All right, well, here we are today, uh, live from Caversham Lakes. It's a beautiful, beautiful late summer or early autumn uh, afternoon. And we're with Mark Hunter and Zach Purchase, Olympic gold medalist, of course, from Beijing. Uh, just been selected for the World Championships in New Zealand. Uh, Mark is to our left, Zach is to our right. Mark's the older one, as Zach is very, very keen to point out. Zach, and you're never going to lose that advantage, are you? No, no, well, you know, he, he does show his age as well sometimes when we're training and you know, he starts, starts coughing a little bit more and, you know, we need to pick up his Zimmer frame when we get out of the boat and that sort of thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll struggle through. Who's the ones that struggle? Can you I have are. a session off? Can I have this? Can I have that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we don't have a domestic uh, on, on film. So anyway, look, uh, you've both taken a bit of time off after Beijing. Mark, what did you get up to? Um, I decided that I wanted some time away from the UK. I was lucky enough to get a job coaching freshmen and novice girls at UCLA. So I disappeared out to Los Angeles. So you, just to reiterate, you were coaching American female students at UCLA? Yes. yes. Okay, that's a tough gig. Why did you do that? Because uh, I just wanted a break from actually being an athlete and I thought I could give some kind of tuition and teaching to youngsters and what better place to do it than in the sunny state of uh, California. So what, um, what, uh, what made you come back? Uh, just watching my athletes progress and enjoy racing and the buzz they got from it and then also you know, I grew up in the Eastern as a kid and to think not being part of the Olympics would be criminal so I decided that I better start doing some exercise again and I'm doing nothing for a long time. Um, it's enjoyable but then when I started training again it was absolute hell but no, it was definitely the right decision and obviously looking forward to 2012. It's quite ironic actually as you say you, you did grow up in the East End uh, and you speak to people like Christine Oharugu and it's like five minutes from, from where she was born, where she lives and uh, it would be pretty close for you as well except you'll be wearing over, over at, uh, at Eton which of course is a fantastic facility but um, not the East End. No, unfortunately uh, rowing always tends to be miles out of where the Olympics is actually you know, the stadium and the, the village is so we always have to kind of stay out and then eventually we're allowed to go into the village but you know the buzz every time I go back over there when I go up to kind of West Ham or going to London you know you just see the, the area developing and the buzz and the excitement growing every day so you know, I think it's awesome I'm really excited I'm looking forward to it. Quick quick tangent you're a West Ham supporter? Yes uh, obviously grew up in the East End there's only one team you should support I hate these people that are glory hunters you know I've stuck stuck with them through thick and thin yeah. Um, mainly, um, mainly thin at the moment. Mainly right? thin, mainly yeah. thin. But you know, there's always uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Meanwhile, Zach, okay, bereft of your partner for a year, but you took time off as well, didn't you? Yeah, um, but I spent the first part of the season training, and it was uh, it was challenging to come back after Beijing. I was pretty pretty shattered after the sort of 18 months, sort of two years of really full-on work. I mean, presumably physically and mentally? Yeah, for definitely physically and mentally. And, and frustratingly, I did all the winter training. And then when it came to the racing in the summer, um, I decided, actually, no, I had enough and uh, <laughs> to just relax a bit more. Well, you're back together, and I guess the old adage in sport is, uh, you know, it's one thing getting up there and, and winning the big one. It's, a, it's another thing doing it again and again. So I guess, you know, winning in Beijing is fantastic, but there's much more to achieve. Yeah, this... Uh, this, this season's really just been about getting back into the into the sport, back into racing on the international stage and really just trying to sort of set the standard of, of where we want to be and, and how high we can get when we when it comes to racing in London. Um, you know, we're both really driven about, about winning in London, that is our ultimate goal and everything we do along the way is just going to be focused on that. So if we can help ourselves now do something special then, that's, that's what we're about. Do you think if it was somewhere else, Mark, but, but not the London Games, you... It might have been more of a struggle to haul yourself out of bed. Yeah, it would probably be more difficult to come back from uh, you know, the, sunny, the sunny beach in LA, definitely for me, because I was quite set up by the time I left America. You know, I had everything planned, I knew what was going on, I knew how to get around, I knew how things worked. Despite missing Zach? Despite missing Zach, yeah. And yeah, he just enjoyed <laughs> But no, obviously, you know, London is massive to have a home Olympics for any home for an athlete is huge. You know, it's, it's, it's the one thing you always dream about being able to compete on the home water on the biggest stage in sport. So you know it's a it's, 
that's what we're all about now, really. That's all we think about is you know, getting that optimal performance right on that day in 2012. So for those who don't know, just, just how's it gone so far and what are your genuine hopes for New Zealand, the World Championships uh, in uh, uh, late October, early November, and how much of it is a stepping stone to London? Well, obviously, having the year out, you know, this is kind of our first year back, and this time last year when we both came back, we both had our meetings, and we were just trying to establish ourselves back in the team, but to uh, progress where we have and get back in the lightweight double, which we finished off in Beijing, you know, I look at it as we're both ahead of where we were anticipating to be. Um, and now we can actually put ourselves in a good enough position to deliver a performance in New Zealand to go on from there. And Mark, you must be delighted that Zach's deigned to get back in a boat with you because obviously he, he became a musical superstar having performed the saxophone on the BBC Sports Personality of the Year and I assume he'd be now playing in big bands and really just ditching you. Well, I, yeah, that's what I thought would happen, you know, because... I've never actually seen him play it before, and then I see him on television, obviously being there was amazing. Did he actually play it or was he miming? Uh, he was playing. I, I get to give it. it. He yeah. played. Yeah. But I'm waiting for him to bring it on training camp so you know, he can <laughs> practice. I haven't seen him do that no yet. chance. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, good to see you guys, and uh, you're obviously enjoying it. Mind you, it's a beautiful day today, so so why not? Expectations for this World Championships are, I mean, you know, let's not expect you to win every single race at the moment. You're developing still. Do you feel almost like a new a new crew? That's the exciting yeah. thing, yeah. We are yeah. a new crew. You know, the events changed now. It's not the same crews that we were racing before. They're different, and, you know, we've got to treat ourselves a new combination, you know, getting back together, you know, we can't be the same crew, we'll come up short, but... It'd be really boring if we would, if we did go out and do exactly the same stuff still, you know, three years later, that would get really, really mind-numbing, but the challenge is there and we're rising to it. And as an East Ender, finally, Mark, I mean, okay, you'll be rowing over, over to the west side of London, but, you know, seriously, you've, you, you, you see the Olympic Park building, it's a massive area, it's a pretty run-down area before, uh, it's very exciting just driving past. How, how do you think you're going to feel marching inside an Olympic Stadium in a part of East London which you're very familiar with and frankly needed something doing to it? Yeah, no, it, you know, just think about it now, I get like, shivers down my spine kind of thinking about it, goosebumps and that sort of thing, but um, just the area, you know, the way it's developed and developing, you know, it's incredible. I remember I used to kind of drive past that way to go to my kind of primary school and that was just all kind of industrial, run-down area. And there was Happy Speed where we used to go to every now and then and that sort of thing. And to see that whole area being, you know, re rebuilt and developed, you know, for the biggest spectacle that the whole world is going to be watching is just absolutely incredible and amazing.